How you doing, pal? I'm poorly. They asked if I'd mind showing you how to buy and sell things. Pretty exciting, huh? No. <laughs> Not at all. Hello, this is us awesome. And I just finished playing uh playing the pet rescue in Dangered Island or whatever the heck it was called, I can never remember. It's got a ridiculous title. <laughs> a ridiculously long title. Um and because of that I'm on to my next DS game, which I scheduled for myself. And of course, it is Viva Pinata Pocket Paradise, which a lot of people uh, actually subscribed and wanted to see um, but I've had several um, technical problems with this game <laughs> over and over again so this is like the fourth or fifth attempt at trying it but hopefully this will work out this time um, it's a nice relaxing game um, but it, it, these episodes are going to be a bit longer maybe 20 minutes instead of 10 minutes because this game takes a long time for anything to happen so if you did 10 minute episodes, nothing would happen. So uh, 20 minutes at least for each episode. Um, but this game is slightly glitchy in the emulator, so the music might glitch out a little bit at certain times. But apart from that, the game works more or less okay. Um, and it's my, it kind of works like a PC game. You use the touch screen to click on options and stuff. Um, it's like a management game. Um, but without a garden and uh, it's very similar to the original Viva Piñata game. If you don't know what Viva Piñata is, it was a, it, the first Viva Piñata was a game exclusive to the Xbox 360 which uh, was about looking after piñata animals which act like a living animals that come into your garden and you have to plant certain plants and vegetables and have certain do decorations in your garden to attract at different animals. And then once you have the animals, you breed them by playing mini games. And that's generally the gist of it. You try and get as many animals as possible. Eat once you've done one species, you get rid of them, do another one until you've done all the species in the game. It's that type of thing. It's a very relaxing, lovely game to play. I absolutely love the one on the Xbox 360. I'll do that sometime on the channel as well. But this one's more interesting because this one's a DS edition called Pocket Paradise, as I've said. And this one, hardly anybody knows that it exists, despite the fact that it's actually a very good rendition. It's um, a very, I think they've actually done a really good job in changing the rules slightly and changing the controls so that they work for the DS better. The only problem is that the DS has got a very small screen, so it can be a bit difficult to manage because of that. I mean, I've got the screen stretched on my computer, but if you played this on a real DS, it'd be pretty difficult. <laughs> um, so so it, it does have that problem. But and some things like uh, that about this game uh, don't make sense. Like there's some weird f um, fence issues. Um, the fencing system doesn't work well at all. And um, the the rules have changed between this game and the original. So if I, if you're like me and played the original and then tried to play this one, you might be surprised that some of the things don't don't work the same way. So um, I'll probably go if I notice any changes that I remember, I'll go through them with you when I'm playing it. But I am planning on making a separate video talking about um, the actual changes, the different the many differences between the games if that's helpful for anybody but enough talking this is we're gonna get right into it here comes the intro picturesque piñata island. In its many gardens, all manner of piñatas live, dance, and dream that one day they will be chosen to entertain at a party as only piñatas can. Well, most piñatas, that is. Oh, fudge! Shake it, shake it, shake it. Like a party animal! Hmm. 
it seems this version, I got a different version of um, the file this time, and this one actually seems to be working better. So maybe it'll be less litchy. But, yeah, that intro is not the intro in the original, it's the intro of the cartoon. Which must have been made at this around the same time. So, let's make a new file. Default name is Yop Yop. Hi there, my name's Langston. Before we continue, please enter your name. Okay, uh, what should we call ourselves? I'm just gonna go... Uh, default... Or Tis. Can I fit it in? Or... I can't fit all of it in, so I'm gonna go... Like this. Close enough. What is awesome? Boom. Oh, there's a extensive tutorials in this game. Uh, I'm going to go through them so you get an idea of how this game could work for kids. Except, even though the, this game and the Xbox 360 game are advertised for children, I very much doubt kids would actually enjoy these games, considering they take a lot of complicated management, and they take quite a, a little bit of complicated management and they can be they take a lot of patience and i mean a lot of patience um which i don't think kids are gonna have but Yep, it has clips from the uh, from the show all the time. Hey there, it's Hudson, you know, famous piñata celebrity. Well, I've been booked to present the first part of your training, getting to grips with moving piñatas around the garden. Okay, let's get going. Use your stylus, that's long pointy thing found inside your DS, and give me a quick prod on the bottom screen. That feels better. All right, I think I'll just stretch my legs. Well, that was painless. As you can see, I've strolled casually off the edge of the screen. Why don't you try to find me? Touch the bottom screen with the stylus. Now drag the stylus in any direction to view different parts of the garden. Like this. Yep. Hello. That's it. You can also move your viewpoint with the small purple icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. Give it a try. Or you can use the control pad. Which is very handy. There's just very different ways of directing it. I like using the control pad, so I'm going to use that. Well, the equivalent, considering I'm in an emulator. Oh, it's telling me I have to do it this way. Okay, there you go. Come on then, touch me if you can. But remember, no autographs today. There you are. Nicely done, you caught up with me. Time for a quick rest. All this uh, cantering around is hard work. Okay then, now I'll teach you how to actually direct a piñata. Touch me again with the stylus and drag it away from me. You should see a yellow cursor. Using this method, direct me to each of the three hay bales in the garden. This is an awkward ass way of doing it, but you get used to it. There we are. That's the first one. That guide me to the second hay bale. I think they're in the corners. So... There you go. You have to click and drag it and hold the button. It's easier to do on the DS, obviously, this type of thing. Two down, one to go. Could you hurry up a little? I have to open a fate this afternoon. Shut up, you asshole. I'm feeding you hay bales. As you can hear, it's a little bit glitchy, the sound. Excellent. Let's make sure that was the fluke. I left four apples around the garden. Use your newly acquired skills to find them and guide me to them. Yeah, this game really does make sure that you get the things in the tutorials. It takes The tutorials take forever. That's the first one. Found and eaten. Let's see if you can track down the rest. Hmm, you know, these training episodes do have the plus points. That's two apples. I think this the purpose of the apple bit is to direct you uh, to learn how to direct um, to smaller items and how to see what they are. 
Crunchy, three down. Just that tricky final one to go. That's it. Moving training over. Full marks to you. That's all you need to know about guiding your pinatas around the gun. Until next time. Well done on completing your first test. Time to pay a visit to Fergie, who has his very own wisdom to share. Good luck with that. I'm pretty sure that it does actually force you to do all these tutorials. I'm not quite sure. You might be able to skip them, but I'm not going to. Oh, you're here already. This is Fergie, you know, the foot hog. Okay, well, I need you to help. I need to help you get to grips with the garden tools. This is the bit, the bit that you do need to know, because this is how the DS system works. By the way, take as long as you want. The longer you keep me here, the less chance I have to being sent to one of those awful parties. Yeah, that's to do with the characters from the cartoon. You won't get it if you haven't seen the cartoon, so it's kind of a bit stupid, but whatever. We better get you started. As you can see, a wheelbarrow has appeared at the top of the screen. I know it's kind of strange, you just need to accept it <laughs> and touch it with the stylus. See how that opened up the tool menu? Now select the shovel. That'll give you the option to tap or poke something. The green one. All going to plan so far. You have to remember what these ones, all these ones do because they, they, they don't really... The ones with tool pictures on them, like the shovel, obviously you know what it is, but then there's two different actions you can do with it and they only have like different coloured splats, so it's like you have to remember what each one does. All going to plan so far. Try poking me with the shovel. Not too hard. I have sensitive skin. <laughs> I can live with that. The poke tap function has lots of different uses. Let me just hide in my house. Then you can get me to come back out with a gentle tap on the roof. Never do this, by the way. <laughs> it's a bit bad that it tells you it in the tutorial when it's a completely useless mechanic in the game itself. In the game itself, this never works. If you do it, and if they do happen to come out, they'll just go straight back in again and there's and, and not in the time that you're able to interact them, with them. So it really doesn't work out. Now this is the bit that could go horribly wrong. For select the shovel icon again, now it's time for another, as we've seen the whack function. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. I've just been downstairs. <laughs> okay. That this one's a whack function. Don't hit me. I've put down four of my prize pumpkins. Hit those instead. You can obviously hit him and he'll say something. Fudge, what are you doing? You're supposed to smash the pumpkins. <laughs> I'm going to use the directional pad. When you're using a tool, it's best to use the directional pad to move around so you don't accidentally smack things. There goes my lunch. Might as well go get the others. Two pumpkins down, go ahead smash the last two. I mean, why not? You told me to, you idiot. I saw he was running away to get that last pumpkin before I do. Well, looks like you got the hang of that. Now we need to get, need to use the dig ground function to clear away some of this rubble. And that's the dirt one. You can obviously remember what that one does. Hey, you're not doing it properly. I'm not as stupid as I look. You just need to clear the rubble, that's all. What are you talking about? I haven't even done anything yet. I think you're actually getting somewhere here. Don't be patronising or I'll smack you again. I have the power. I am God and God. I will hurt you, fudge man. Just a bit more. There you go. That's good enough. Nice work. Grass is good, but it's not everything. Let's get that watering can. We'll plant a few seeds, and you need to show me that you can water them. Okay. Over to your wheelbarrow again. Take out the watering can. 
Move the watering can over the seeds and water them. Each plant has its own individual water meter. You need to keep it half full. Yeah, the watering can in this has a charge meter. You can see it just by the side of the watering can up there. You can see it filling. Oh, it's already grown. It won't let me water it anymore. There you go. Wait for it to charge a little bit. Right, watch this. Right, up to the top. That's what you're meant to do. There you go. Get to the middle and it will grow. There we are. Plants are delicate, like me. Not enough water and they'll wilt. Too much and they'll become overwatered. Overwatering them slightly doesn't actually matter. Only if you overwater them a lot. And that's kind of difficult to do, especially with the limited amount of water in the watering can. So it's not much of a big deal. But underwatering them matters, so keep an eye on that. Keep putting an eye on the watering can fill meter too. If you empty it, you'll have to wait a while for the refill before you can use it again. That's a new function. Didn't have that in the original. I know that. I'm not sure why it has that in this version. The garden's ready for planting, so we can finally go green and lay down some grass seed. This time, choose the grass seed packet from the wheelbarrow. Use it to grass over the area you just cleared of rubble. There we are. We're all done. I can't think of anything else to show you, so I better go find a good hiding place, preferably somewhere well away from Pinata Central. Now that you know how to use your tools, you're almost ready to take on the responsibility of your own garden. Let's move along and see what tips Paulie has to offer. Ah, shopping system. How you doing, pal? I'm Paulie. They asked if I'd mind showing you how to buy and sell things. Pretty exciting, huh? No. <laughs> Not at all. Just follow my advice and we'll be done in no time. Use your stylus to touch the shop icon. Once you've done that, select the icon of Lottie's head. This will take you to her store. Cost a lot. Except you don't know who Lottie is unless you've... But yeah, it's, it's this girl. This girl. And she has the most terrifying face in this game. <laughs> Plus, the music is really weird. So here we are, ready to splash the cash. Use your stylus to pick the seeds option. First touch highlights it, second touch makes a selection. Good, it's a buttercup seed we want, so use the same process to select that one. As you can see, the asking price is two coins. I better just slip you some cash so we won't make, so, or we won't go much further. Now select the buttercup seed is again. Let's find a place for the seed in your garden. Use the stylus to move around and drop the seed wherever you want, as you can only afford a single seed right now. Select the tick icon to buy it and return to the garden. I'm just going to plant it here. Boop. What's that? We need to actually plant the seed? Man, you're ahead of the curve. <laughs> okay, select the seed with the stylus. Make sure you have it highlighted. Then choose the trowel icon to plant it. Yep. Good stuff. On a different note, it'd be nice for me to have somewhere to hang out, so go to let's go see Willy Builder. That's just a stage, stage name, you know. Anyway, go to the shop menu and select Wheelie Builder's head. This guy. Which looks even scarier. Seriously, he's looking into my soul. The hell is with this guy? Welcome to Wheelie's shop. First select the icon for Pinata houses, then the Pretzdale house. That's me right there. Oh, I guess I better lend you a few more coins to cover the cost. Hmm? This is how you get um, houses for breeding. 
So this is important. When you're choosing a site for the house, make sure you have enough clear space. If there's anything in the way, you'll see crosses rotating around the base of the house. Crosses are bad news. Satisfied that this is the best place for your house, you can also rotate it using the purple arrows, like this. And it only rotates in sort of diagonal um, positions for some reason. When you're happy with the position and direction, select the tick. Except I'm not, because I can't place it there. So I want to click and drag to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it here. Houses don't appear immediately, you have to be built. So our boy Willy Builder will make his way over to the new construction shed. Once he gets here, he'll enter the shed and start working his certified craftsman's magic. Yeah, unlike in the original game where he has to actually walk into the garden, this game he comes out the ground in front of it. So it can be a little bit faster. The annoying thing is that, as you can see, he does get rid of the grass in front of where he goes, which is annoying. Okay, all done. To reveal the house, select the shovel and whack the shed. Giving Pinatas a home will make them happier and also help with romancing. That's next on the agenda. Yet we'll find out what that means later. Boop. Nice pad, although it'd be even better if I had someone to share it with. Romancing piñatas is the key to filling your garden. Normally you have to meet each piñata's romance requirements, but for now let's skip all that with a couple of pieces of romance candy. Here you go. Touch either me or the new piñata and guide us to the candy. Mm. We already know how to make them eat things. Perfect, now do the same for the other. Yeah, it's explaining how breeding works. And as simple as that, we're ready to romance. Why not use a stylus to drag us together to see what happens? This is how you get them to romance. Point at each other when they got hearts above them. I love the way the Pretzdales, like, <laughs> stroke their ears. It's all perfectly innocent, but if you feel you need to look away... <laughs> Let's take in the mick. <laughs> Romancing is obviously a, a, a kid-friendly word for uh, making love, so... But this is an adult place, so I don't care. He's waiting. Come on, woman! Where are you going? <laughs> this is one problem. The AI is terrible in this game. <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> and that's romancing. The quickest and most natural way to populate your garden with new piñatas. That's it. Paulie's done. <laughs> Just one more thing. You can sell any item in your garden by highlighting it and selecting the sell icon. Go ahead, sell the house. Don't worry, I got my new swanky pad just out of town. Sell. Just select the tick icon to confirm and you're done. You can also select multiple ones before you play. select the tick and the picture above it so it shows you which ones you're selling. Excellent. You're a natural. See you again soon. The final training episode is now unlocked. Franklin's waiting for you as patiently as a, fr a fizzly bear can. <laughs> I, I think this is navigating the um, the me the menus. I think again, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I hate that guy in the cartoon, because he's like, he's a, a surfing stereotype. Like, really. Hey there, dude. Awesome to be here. It's up to me to get you through the final part of your training. First thing I'm supposed to tell you about this is the overhead map. Use that stylus thing to select the overhead map icon on the bottom screen. Way cool. Now you can see me on the map. That small icon, see? The one that looks like me? Man, we feel the best. It's so photogenic. Use the stylus to select me. Excellent. Now tap me again to jump straight to my position in the garden. Now you can totally see me on the lower screen. 
You can use the same method to go to houses. Am I explaining this all okay? No problem, dude. Now onto alerts. Alerts are there to help you keep track of serious events in your garden. When something important happens, an alert appears on the map icon. Except the alerts are kind of useless. <laughs> Because the alerts tell you when something is eating something, and if you have the right kind of garden, then you're probably going to have that happen a lot, and you don't want to see it. So it's kind of irritating, but it can be useful sometimes. Whoa, see that? An alert came in, like, as we were talking about it. Quick, select the map icon. Uh-oh, looks like we got a fight going on in the garden. So you have the one with the to zoom in straight on the action. Man, that's rough. Who do you think is going to win? My money's on the Bulls' girl. And this actually is different. <laughs> I've played this a few times and it does, do, it does, it's like 50-50 which one wins. Which is kind of cool. I think the Bulls' gum's going to die. The other guy's got the first hit. Yeah, it's all over. See how the loser left on candy? Eating the candy made the other pinners much happier. I've heard someone say that's like wrong, but what's so wrong about your own candy? <laughs> this game's just taking the mick now. It knows it's morbid. It's just like, whatever. <laughs> well, now all that excitement's over, I'll help you get through the last few things. Go ahead and select the switch icon that's just appeared. Now, this is important. You have to press the switch icon to go into your proper menu, so you can see um, a list of recent events, which is what's here, fight occurred, fight lost. It shows you um, the recent events on which Binyatas were involved. Um, and it shows you resident requirements for whatever guy you've got selected. Um, so I believe these are for yeah, these are the ones for the for the bear because he's selected. And the encyclopedia is like a um, a message board where you can see all the ones which you've got residents list which you've got. Oh wait, no, that's in residents. You got residents here. You click on that and you see how what residents you have, what their names are, and their stats. Encyclopedia tells you the stats of all the pinatas that you've ever owned. So if, you, if you've discovered a piñata, it'll tell you a little description and anything that you know about that piñata in case you need to get them back or something like that. And the awards is an achievement system because there isn't any achievement system on the DS so they added their own achievement system because there used to be achievements on the Xbox 360 as a main part of the game. So it's just added its own award system. He, he's going to explain it but I, I just explained it my own way just then. The journal gives you all the information you need. Check it out, my head hurts already. Okay, three icons on the right hand side will take you to the encyclopedia, play awards, and current residents in that order. The bottom of the screen shows information about individual piñatas. If you look at my current requirements, it says I need two jars of honey and eight fur cones. Listen to the journal, dude. Talks a lot of sense. You'll be able to click on these icons to get more information. Just to hop onto the journal and explore these options later when you have the chance. Yeah, it doesn't tell you much. It just says, here they are, check it later. One final thing, if you select the name of Binyata, you can rename it anything you want. How cool is that? Yeah, click, click on the name in this menu and you can rename it. Great, now click on the swap screens icon to return to the garden. That's the most important thing you're going to have to remember. That bit, you'll be using that a lot. That's it, gardening dude. We're officially done. You ready to go. Viva Piñata! You've completed all four training episodes. Feel free to enter Main Garden and watch the new episodes as you play the game. Yeah, it does actually um, give you all the tutorials as you go on, but you don't have to do them. You can also access the playground whenever you want to practice your skills. Mm -hmm. Now we're into the actual game. How long did that take? 35 minutes. Well, that's a couple episodes. <laughs> I might just cram that into one episode and leave it just like tutorial episode. So uh, thank you for watching. This was awesome. See you again next time where we'll actually play the game. See ya.